Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on the worst and best foods to eat if you have gout. So the foods we're going to talk about in this lesson have been shown to either increase the risk of having gout attacks or reduce the risk of having gout attacks. And we're going to talk about those foods in this lesson. But first, let's talk about what gout is. Gout is an inflammatory monoarticular arthropathy. So what does that mean? It involves inflammation. Mono means one. Articular so one joint, one joint is often involved, although we can see multiple joints, but oftentimes it's one joint. And arthro means joint and pathy means disease. So it's an inflammatory process involving one joint. It's a one joint disease oftentimes. It's caused by deposition of monosodium urate crystals that get into the joint from hyperuricemia or high levels of uric acid in the blood. And this uric acid comes from purine metabolism. So we're going to talk about some foods that have high purine levels and some foods that have low purine levels. And we're going to see that they correlate with regards to increasing and decreasing the risk of gout attacks. A key characteristic of gout is that there can be gout attacks or what we call flares. And as we mentioned before, gout most commonly affects only one joint. And the most commonly affected joint is the first MTP joint or first metatarsal phalangeal joint. That's just a fancy word for saying the big toe. So this joint here on the big toe, but other joints can be affected as well, including knees and ankles. And there can be other signs of gout as well, including tophi. So these are tophi here. These are depositions of crystals in certain parts of the body. And then we can also see a fever as well, because this is an inflammatory process. A fever can occur as well. But the topic of this lesson is that risk of gout attacks or gout flares are changed, can be increased or decreased with certain dietary choices. We're going to first talk about the foods to avoid or the worst foods to eat with gout. And then later on in this lesson, we're going to talk about the best foods to eat. Most of the information presented in this lesson is going to come from this meta-analysis entitled Dietary Factors and Risk of Gout and Hyperuricemia, a Meta-Analysis and Systematic Review. And from this article entitled Purine Rich Foods Intake and Recurrent Gout Attacks. And also some information from the Mayo Clinic page on gout diet, what's allowed and what's not. So the first type of food we're going to talk about here that is best to avoid if you have gout is seafood. So when I say seafood, I more specifically mean shellfish because shellfish contains high levels of purines. Some examples of seafood that is best to avoid include scallops, clams, mussels, shrimp, and lobster as these seafood selections have high levels of purines. And as I mentioned before, purine metabolism leads to increased uric acid levels. And this is where we get urate crystals that cause gout. Some other foods that are best to avoid if you have gout include certain types of meat. So some meats contain high levels of purines. And examples of meats to avoid include red meats. So you can think of things like steak, pork, and lamb. So these types of meat are best to avoid because they too also have high levels of purines. Some other types of meats more specifically include organ meats. Organ meats also contain high levels of purines and examples include liver and kidneys. Another dietary selection to avoid if you have gout includes high fructose corn syrup. You might be wondering why this is the case. Well, High fructose metabolism in the liver can cause an increase in uric acid production. So the way high fructose is metabolized in the liver, uric acid can be a byproduct of that metabolism. So having high fructose intake from high fructose corn syrup, as an example, increases the production of uric acid in the liver from metabolizing of that fructose. Because of this, high consumption of fructose increases the risk of gout. And that leads us on to the next dietary selection to avoid if you have gout, which is sweetened beverages. Because oftentimes sweetened beverages contain high fructose corn syrup. Many studies have actually found that high consumption of sweetened beverages leads to an increased risk of hyperuricemia, or high levels of uric acid in the blood, and high risk of gout attacks. So examples of sweetened beverages that are best to avoid if you have gout include soda or pop and juice. So again, it's most due to that high fructose corn syrup content. It leads to increased fructose metabolism in the liver, leading to formation of uric acid, and that increases your uric acid in your body. 
Another beverage to avoid if you have gout includes alcohol. There is a direct association between alcohol intake and risk of hyperuricemia and gout. So as you increase your alcohol intake, that increases your uric acid levels, increases your risk of gout. Examples of alcohol to avoid include beer, whiskey, and vodka. So those are the foods and beverages to avoid if you have gout. Now let's talk about the best foods to eat with gout. So some of the foods and beverages we're going to talk about here are advised to be eaten because they have lower purine levels. So they have a lower chance of causing gout attacks. But some of the foods and beverages we're going to talk about have been shown to have some potentially protective effects against gout attacks and it may actually reduce future gout attacks. So the first selection of foods we're going to talk about that are best to eat if you have gout include fruits. Many fruits have low purine content. And you might be wondering, okay, fruits may have a low purine content, but they have fructose. And we mentioned before, fructose can lead to increased production of uric acid. So you might be wondering, does the fructose in fruits lead to increased uric acid levels? But it doesn't seem to be the case. Fructose content from fruit is less likely to induce hyperuricemia or a high uric acid level. So it seems to be the high fructose corn syrup specifically very, very high fructose levels in short periods of time seem to lead to this higher level of uric acid, not the fructose content that we see from fruit. We just don't see that causing hyperuricemia like we do in high fructose corn syrup. And one fruit in particular that seems to be very good for gout is cherries. So consumption of cherries is actually associated with a decreased risk of gout attacks. So cherries, very good to eat if you have gout. Another group of foods that are best to eat if you have gout include vegetables. Again, the reason being vegetables contain lower levels of purines. But there are some vegetables that contain high purine levels. These include cauliflower and asparagus. But even so, even these vegetables that do contain higher purine levels do not seem to increase risk of gout attacks, especially in comparison to certain types of meat and seafood we talked about before. The purine levels are not as high and it seems that the purines in the vegetables are likely used to produce purines in the body as opposed to being broken down and used for uric acid, although this is a possible mechanism. The reasoning for this is not entirely known. Some other good foods to eat if you have gout include nuts. So because you may be avoiding some meats and some seafood, you might not be getting a lot of protein. Nuts can be a good source of protein, and nuts often have lower levels of purines. So, as I mentioned before, nut consumption may be a better alternative for acquiring protein in one's diet. And although I mentioned avoiding certain types of seafood and meat, there are some types of fish and other meats that are better to eat if you have gout in comparison to the other ones we mentioned earlier on in this lesson. So, the reason is because certain seafood and meats have lower purine content. Some examples of meats that have lower purine content include non-shellfish variety of fish. So you can think of things like salmon. They have lower purine levels than some shellfish like scallops. And then chicken. Chicken has lower purine content than red meat would. Some other good foods to eat if you have gout include soy products. Soy products do contain moderate amounts of purines. And at one point they were previously advised to be avoided if you did have gout. But a lot of research has found that an increased consumption of soy products is associated with a reduced risk of hyperuricemia and gout attacks. So it seems that the more soy products you eat, the lower the chance of having hyperuricemia and gout attacks. The reasoning for this is not entirely known, but it has been shown several times that increased consumption of soy reduces the risk of gout attacks. Some examples of soy products include soy milk, tofu, and edamame. And some other legumes can also be eaten with gout. Increased consumption of these other types of legumes is also associated with a reduced risk of hyperuricemia and gout attacks. And examples include chickpeas, lentils, and beans. Some other dietary selections that can be beneficial if you have gout include dairy products. There does seem to be an inverse relationship between consumption of dairy and hyperuricemia and gout. So inverse relationship means that as you increase the consumption of one, the risk of the other goes down. So if you increase your consumption of dairy products, your risk of hyperuricemia and gout goes down. 
And if you decrease your dairy products consumption, your risk of hyperuricemia and gout goes up. So there's an inverse relationship here. So this is an association, so it doesn't necessarily imply causation. And some examples of dairy products include milk and cheese. We can also see consumption of coffee being good if you have gout as well. And there is also this inverse relationship with coffee consumption in hyperuricemia and gout. So as you increase your coffee consumption, your risk of hyperuricemia and gout goes down. And some of the quoted studies had participants drinking upwards of six cups of coffee per day. So some of the studies showed high levels of coffee consumption can reduce risk of hyperuricemia and gout. And what was interesting to note was that the effect, this inverse relationship, was noted even with non-caffeinated coffee. So decaf coffee can also seem to play a role in reducing your risk of hyperuricemia and gout. So if you want to learn more about gout and risk factors and signs and symptoms of gout, please check my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.